Hey, let me let you in on a little secret. Real hackers do not use reverse shells. And this is something that could be jarring if you're a newcomer, because anytime you see remote code execution, you always see spawn your netcat reverse shell. Maybe you dig a little bit deeper and you're like, oh, there's SOCAT reverse shells and stuff like that. Here's the deal. The real attacker is not going to use that. Why? You might be asking, why would an attacker not use a reverse shell? Well, of course, the further you dive down this rabbit hole of cybersecurity and pen testing, red teaming, all that, you find that what they teach you in the beginning, just like in school, right? What they teach you in the beginning is not how it actually happens in the real world. It's not what real world attackers actually do. For example, if you've taken physics or anything like that uh, in college, you know, they teach you the ideal case first, right? In a perfect world where there's no drag force and the gravity is at 9.8, and, you know, there's no other forces acting on the object. It would fall in this amount of seconds or whatever. And then you take a higher level physics course and they're like, well, by the way, there's all these other factors that come into play. We didn't want to confuse you too much in the beginning. We wanted to simplify things. But in the real world, it actually works this way. And that's exactly what you see in pen testing. So as you dive deeper, you find that stuff. And as you guys are diving deeper into this whole field and in this rabbit hole, right? Eventually you're gonna come to a point where you're ready to start applying to jobs and you're gonna need to arm yourself with the top 10 pen testing interview questions that you absolutely need to know. So I have that in the description below. Check that out absolutely for free. And yeah, let's just crack right into this one. What do attackers do then if they don't use those reverse shells that we're so familiar with? Well, the reason they don't use them, first of all, is because it's bad OPSEC. Now, what is OPSEC, right? Because some of you guys might not be familiar with the term. Essentially, what OPSEC is, is operational security, I believe is what it's short for. Essentially, what it means is it's just not good practice. And why is it? it was follow the trail of whys, right? Why is it not good practice? Well, there's a number of reasons. For one thing, Obviously, if you're using a netcat reverse shell, that's all in plain text. So a blue teamer can not only see that you have that reverse shell running, they can and find your IP address because with the netcat reverse shell, you're connecting directly back to your IP as the attacker, which is going to get you easily found by any good cyber defense person, right? Any good blue teamer, any bad blue teamer, probably, honestly. And beyond that, it's also bad to just have netcat reverse shells or socat reverse shells, whatever you want to use, standard reverse shells, because, well, what happens if that shell dies, right? What happens if they, you, you know what I mean? Like, what if you have multiple shells, right? What if you run a phishing campaign and you get multiple people to click, but you only have one reverse shell, so you only capture you know, one, one shell from that, and then you lose that shell, right? It, it's really difficult to manage. And, you know, you send with a reverse shell, right? So you send a command and you instantly get the data back. Well, you might want to have some time delay in there. You can't do that with a standard reverse shell. And so it will be more difficult to hide yourself from the blue team. That is like the huge takeaway there. It's going to be extremely difficult, pretty much impossible to hide yourself from the blue team. Now, there's never a 100% undetectable way to do things, but there is an alternative that is much better. Now, if you guys have been diving down this rabbit hole of red teaming a little bit, you might be familiar with a piece of technology called a command and control server. There's things called C2 frameworks out there. That's something you may be familiar with. If you're not, essentially... It is some software that allows you to spin up your own server where you can control all of the all of your all of your beacons. It depends on the exact terminology depends on what C2 framework you're using. Cobalt Strike is something you might be familiar with. That's the most popular C2 framework and they use the terminology beacons. So a beacon would be you know when you get you know say you get remote code execution on the system instead of spawning a reverse shell a netcat reverse shell or something like that you would instead set up your beacon on that server and it would connect back to your command and control server now here is the caveat you do not want it to connect directly back to the ip address of your command and control server 
Because again, anyone on the blue team could then know the address of your C2 server. So you want to put a layer of abstraction in between that and the actual C2 server so that they can't easily determine your IP address of your command and control because obviously that would be bad for us as attackers. And the C2 frameworks, they provide an easy way to do all that stuff. They provide very easy ways to implement extremely solid OPSEC that makes it very difficult for defenders to, for one, detect you if you if you configure it correctly and run it right, right? And secondly, it makes it very difficult for them to actually trace it back to you as the attacker specifically, right? Because not only do we not want to get detected, we don't want them to know specifically that it was us if we do get detected, right? So there are a, a number of features, right? Now, it depends on how you configure this thing. That is something I also want to stress to you guys because... In general, if you're just using the out-of-the-box configuration for a C2 server, you're going to get detected pretty easily. So there's a lot of configuration options in these. Uh, too numerous to list in a video like this, really. The de you know the defense, right? The blue team, right? They they know how these t they know about these tools, right? They know about Cobalt Strike. They know about these different frameworks. They know what their default configurations for. So what do you think their detections are written towards, right? they're going to be written towards those defaults, right? Because how could they know what custom configurations you would use on the server? Um, you know, maybe you have some aggressor scripts written if you're using Cobalt Strike, right? They're not going to know about your custom configuration stuff. So that is where that really comes into play. And that's a whole nother rabbit hole, honestly, to dive down um, C2 frameworks and how to stealthily implement them and configure them in the way that is best for OPSEC in your organization or the organization that you're testing against, right? So I know I haven't really covered C2 frameworks in this video. Let me know in the comment section down below if you would like me to dive deeper into C2 frameworks, maybe code one up in Python. I know there was some tutorials in Black Hat Python to do that that I hadn't gotten to yet, uh, but also playing around with some other C2 frameworks, I do not have a Cobalt Strike license at the moment. It will change pretty soon. So we could show some Cobalt Strike uh, on this channel at a certain point if you guys are interested in that. But for now, we can dive into some of the open source options available out there like uh, Covenant, Sliver, stuff like that. I've heard a lot of really good things about Sliver. There's some people on Twitter that even claim that they predict Sliver will eventually overtake Cobalt Strike. I don't know that that's true necessarily, but it does speak to how well-received it is. So we could dive into some of those. Let me know in the comments. And yeah, if you want to get into some technical content, I have that on the screen for you right now. I'll see you guys right over in those videos. Thanks for watching.